Welcome to the math record. Today I'll be covering the second convergence test, the comparison test. So basically, if you're given a summation from 1 to infinity of f of x, and another summation from 1 to infinity a of x, and if a of x is greater than or equal to f of x, so a of 1 is greater than or equal to f of 1, a of 2 is greater than or equal to f of 2, a of 3 is greater than or equal to f of 3, etc., then if a of x converges, which I'll represent as a c, then f of x also converges. Also, if f of x is greater than or equal to a of x this time, and is greater than 0, then if a of x diverges, which I'll represent as a d, then f of x also diverges. So this is a lot to remember, so let's try to simplify this down. So basically, if a of x is greater than f of x, we could think about a of x as a bigger version of f of x. So if a of x converges, so if the bigger version converges, the smaller version should also converge. That's why f of x should converge, which logically makes sense and why that kind of holds true. Now, if we think about a of x is smaller than f of x, then if a of x, a of x diverges, right, if the smaller version diverges, then the bigger version should also diverge which makes sense here. Well, that's just, and that's just the comparison test. Now let's try some examples to do this. So let's say we take the summation from x equals one to infinity of one over x squared plus x, and we wanna check if it's converging or diverging. So usually you only like to think about the leading uh, variables, which is only x squared, because x squared is bigger than x. So we're gonna have one over x squared I'll draw this a little bit down. And we're going to compare it to 1 over x squared plus x. So this is going to be our a of x, and this was our original, so that's f of x. So now we need to determine which one's bigger and which one's smaller. But if you think about it, x squared versus x squared plus x, x squared is smaller than x squared plus x. But since we're taking the reciprocal, 1 over the smaller number is the bigger number. So a of x is greater than or equal to f of x. So if a of x uh, converges, then we know f of x converges. So do we know 1 over x squared converge? Well, yes, because using the p-series, if the exponent is greater than 1, then converge. 2 is greater than 1, so a of x converge. That means f of x converge. And it's just that simple. Let's try another example. Let's take the summation from 1 to infinity of 5x plus 1 times x, 2x plus 3. Expanding this out, that's 5x plus 1, 2x squared plus 3x. Okay, now we think about the leading. So x and x squared, so x divided by x squared is 1 over x. That's our a of x, our f of x. And we're going to compare this to 5x plus 1, 2x squared plus 3x. Okay, now which one's bigger and which one's smaller? Well, if we think about this, if we go to uh, a really, really big number for x, then once this goes to infinity, this is going to be scaled up by 5 on the top and 2 on the bottom. So 5 over 2 will definitely make this term bigger than a of x. So in this case, f of x is greater than or equal to a of x. So if a of x diverges, then f of x diverges. So does a of x diverge? Well, 1 over x, using the p-series, if the exponent is greater than 1, then, it di then it's going to converge. Well, the exponent is exactly 1, so it's going to be diverging. That means f of x also diverges. And that's basically it. And that covers everything for the comparison test. And next video, I'll cover the third co convergence test, the limit comparison test. See you then.